All right, so now we've got to put those holes in the bottom of the can, and you're going to have to do some pretty careful measuring. Now these pieces that we started off with, before we did any sanding, they were three quarters of an inch wide, one inch tall. So two of them at one inch tall each is two inches. So we're probably still pretty close to that, but we have to come off of this bottom fret and we have to come up somewhere between three sixteenths and a quarter of an inch. So remember, it's a canjo, it's not, not all that. So when we stick our ruler right there and we're, we're level against the table, after we've sanded off everything, we sanded off the top of that fret is at two inches. So I'm going to go just a little bit less than two and a quarter back here on the back. And I'll show you how I got that. That's a wind chime. So, I'm going to set that there. Set my can is flat on the table, the, the back of the can, Joe. I'm going to take my Sharpie and I put this right at three and a quarter and I follow that in forward. Now, I want to end up on the inside of this because I have to have that string where it comes to the bottom of the can is going to be where it mounts and I need it to line up with the neck so I'm going to go two and a quarter I'm flat against the bottom alright so now I've got marks down there what we're going to do is we're just going to take our center punch and we got our two and a quarter so we're good and then we're gonna push that in there the bottom of these cans and the top of these cans are pretty much the the firmest part of them so you don't really need to get real tough with them but if you're gonna play it a lot or maybe you start started to wear yours out you're gonna have to do some you're gonna have to make it a little heavier duty so I came up with a, a great way to make them heavier duty and that involves an eighth inch drill bit, a small pink drill. The drill doesn't have to be pink, but the, the bit has to be eighth inch. An eighth inch steel pop rivet. If you can find it, it'd be great if this was the, the washer with steel too, but I couldn't find steel ones, so I have an aluminum one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pop rivet that's steel, because the steel will resist the wire trying to work its way through the wire vibrates when you when you strum the string the wire vibrates and it wants to go down through so we're going to take the eighth inch drill bit and we're going to put it in forward and we're going to drill through that hole we just made nice and gentle okay so now i've got this eighth inch rivet fits right in there. I've got my handy dandy riveter and you can buy a riveter that's got a few rivets in it at the hardware store. I got mine here in Connecticut I found one for 13 bucks brand new. So I think Harbor Freight's even cheaper than that. I happen to have this one. Um, I actually have two. So um, now we have to figure out how to get this little jobby onto that little jobby in the can. Now, if you know about these, what will happen is this little top part is going to work its way down in there and it expands that out. And that's what will hold it tight. And that's good. Then this top shank part actually breaks off. That's the pop of the pop rivet that makes that sound. And then what we have to do is we actually have to drive that inside piece back out the other end. It's not, not all that big of a deal, but it's got to come out because the string's going to go through there. So, I'm going to see what I can do about getting this. On the bottom of there, see if I can get it close. Maybe I'll use a little piece of fret wire to help me out. All right, now the pop rivet's up. Now you take your handy pop riveter, feed that on there. You read the instructions for this sucker; it'll tell you just what to do. There is a washer on the inside; doesn't need to be one on the outside. And then we take this. Trying to stay straight with the bottom of the can. Watch it in there. Give that up. See, now there's the piece that just popped off. You heard why they call it a pop riveter. You see on the bottom of the can, we've got that nice rivet sitting in there. 
Well, that's all great and good, but it's got a it's got a post in there. So we're gonna take that. I'm actually gonna set the other end on the floor. I'm gonna take my horseshoe hammer. Now, would you look at that? So now we've got a hole that's reinforced. That's a piece of steel, not a piece of aluminum. And now we can take a string, which I have one of right here. We're going to stick that right up through the bottom of the can. We're on a home stretch. You know that because we're putting strings in. And this is a loop end string. So take my, this is actually a, uh, a tack that they use for upholstery tack. It's an upholstery bag. It's a nice little pretty flower. I'm just going to use that. I'm only going to put that in a little bit because I'm going to take it back out when I put the second string on. I'm going to bring this up here. I'm going to wrap around. Yep, yep, yep. Wrap around once. I'm going to wrap around twice. And then I'm going to go through above where I wrapped around, and that's going to hold everything. All right. So. We just showed doing the, uh, the Dr. Pepper can, Joe. Or sorry, not the Dr. Pepper, the Mountain Dew. And I want to show you the Dr. Pepper from beginning to end on the running the string so that you see the whole story. Because now that I've done it twice, um, I think I've got a gist of it. So the first thing we want to do, we want to set this on the table and make sure it's level. Or it's stuck down to the table. We need to take a measurement right back here. And this one looks like it's two inches right at the top of the fretboard. Now we need to go somewhere between three sixteenths and a quarter of an inch up from that. So I'm going to come down here to the end of the can and I'm going to grab my sharpie. So now I need to go that's one, two, three sixteenths I'm going to leave a mark down there but I'm also going to, ooh, you see that? I didn't have it down flat on the table. That would have been bad. I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. That's one inch, that's two inch, that's a quarter. All right, now I've got a couple of marks down there, and I need to go right in amongst them. I'm going to take my my hole punch or my center punch and remember the ends of these cans are pretty durable so you don't have to do this rivet step but I recommend it. That punched a hole. I hope that's eighth inch. It is now. These are aluminum backup washers for riveters. And these are eighth inch by eighth inch rivets. Okay, so those you, I got less than five bucks in, in all of the rivets there. And I got way more than I have ganjos. So I'm going to put that in there. What if I put that on my fret wire? And then I can stick my fret wire out the bottom of the can. using the rivet to press up the front wire and slide that right on slicker and snot on a hoe handle right there all right I'm gonna grab my riveter can't turn that upside down because the washer will fall off stick that up in there Fantastic. It gives me a little piece left over. And I need to use that to hit my rivet. What do you think I did? That was alright, wasn't it? I got my rivet down there on the end. I got my little piece here. 
And I'm going to take that and drive that back in through the can. So now I can put a string on it. So we've got the tuner. That's the bridge. That's the nut. So now we can put a string on it and we can play this thing. So my CB Giddy strings, they don't sell a loop end. So I got 12 strings at CB Giddy that are all the same size, and these were like four bucks for the whole package of, you know, plus shipping and whatever. Now these have a ball end on them. I don't need the ball end, so I take something and stick it through the hole and pop the ball off, and now I have a loop end works for me. The mandolin strings come loop in, so you don't have to do that. So, we got our string, it's all ready. We're gonna do one more thing to our stick. Right here on the end, this is an inch and a half past because we gotta run the string to it. So I'm gonna take my center punch, I'm gonna put it right there in the middle, and put a mark. Now I'm gonna take my string, I'm going to make sure I have my string pointed up. And then I'm going to take this super fantastic, extraordinary upholstery tack that happens to look like a little flower or something. But it's cheap and it's available locally, and that will secure my string. So if I set that on there, I can just tap that in and make sure my string is up. So, bring that string, we're going to stuff it right through that, that little rivet we have on the bottom because we poked the center out of it so it's not in there anymore. We come right up through, comes in, looks like that's doing just fine for us. I'm going to go all the way to the tuning peg and I am going to go around it twice. Set that on there. Go around it once, go around it twice, and then I am going to take the end and put it through the hole and pull it up. Real important to get those two strands, those two turns around there, otherwise the string's going to slip. Oh, look at that. It's already sounding like something. So if you're playing a one-string canjo, you really don't have to worry about tuning too much because you're all by yourself. What's that going to do? That doesn't sound good. And now we're getting somewhere. So this one doesn't have any fret, so you can't put your finger behind the fret, put it on the fret. So that same thing I've been playing. Got fat fingers, this might not work. We need to get our... Uh, we need to get our slide going here. So hang on just a minute. We'll get the slide. We'll get the other get the other uh, canjo up. Oh, I got one more thing I got to do. I got to take this string, this uh, wire. I take a pair of wire cutters and snip it off close. Okay. And that little sucker is sharp, so watch out for it. So I'm gonna get my slide. And we'll give this thing a test drive. 